the processes of the mind, thinking, introspection, meditation, the Nanak's way. There are four sutras through which Nanak explains the various processes of the mind. The actual words goes on, Manne ki gat kahi na jai. Nothing can be said about the speed, the power of the mind. Whosoever says it or uses mind for that has to repent afterwards. And that's how Jeko man jane man koi, rarely someone who begins to understand the various aspects of mind. These four sutras need to be explained together and understood together as the message is seen through these sutras with a slight variation. The methodology of Nanak was, he never wrote anything. When someone comes to him and asks a question, he will tell his disciples Bala and Mardana to start the music and then he will sing. And while he is singing, it is a meditation and people understand that. Now we have to give so much of explanation to make it understood. These sutras explain various processes of mind, thinking, introspection and meditation. Try to understand this word manne, that's what Nanak uses. Manne and manan. Both are the process of the mind, but they differ from one another significantly. How, what is the difference between the two? Look at the swimmer. He remains on the surface. And in the process of swimming, he moves from one place to another. In the process of swimming, only position changes. He covers a distance yet still remains on the same surface. Swimmer moves from position A to B, B to C and so on and so forth. Thus he covers a distance. The position or the situation changes but the depth remains the same. Swimming takes place on the surface of the water. Though it is very relaxing, on the contrary, look at the diver. Diver does not remain on the surface. He takes a dive from one spot and then reaches the deeper levels of water. Diving aims to reach the deeper layers of the water. Accordingly, he moves from one depth to a deeper one. And in this process he continues and this process continues until he reaches to the required depth. In diving he moves from a position A to A1 which is deeper. From the surface he goes 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. Each represent a deeper level. Now when you buy these days watches, it has, it says 50 meters, 75 meter, 100 meter, these refer to depth. Thinking is like swimming and introspection, meditation or manan. Manan is a Hindi word for introspection. The Sufi word is Fikr. Thinking is a linear process. It does not matter what you are thinking about business or God or wife. The level of thinking remains the same. Your understanding never changes. The surface of understanding remains superficial. You can take any word or thought and remain on the surface as far as your understanding is concerned or you start going deeper into your being with the same word. 
For instance, take a word wife or husband. This word is unique. When you are on the surface thinking about the physical relation or through the relation you start moving deeper into the being and reach and enter the realm of the unknown, it all depends on you. With introspection, journey into your being begins. Accordingly, you take one word alone and slowly and slowly you enter different realms. Remember each word that you speak may be dead for you, but if you really understand each word has a living organism and carries a soul within, take any word and start going into its death. This is the essence of Nanak's message. Throughout his life, Nanak went on giving one word Omkar to his disciple. This is Satnam. You have to enter into the depth of this world. And as you start exploring its depth, various realms and energy fields and the process of transformation begins. When it says Satnam, you start introspecting. Whatever be the word, if you understand the Sanskrit language, it comes from the two words. You can go into synthesis of the word, whether it is English, Arabic, Persian, Urdu or Sanskrit. You go into its etymology. You go to its very root. You are entering into diving, going into the very soul, the core of this world. You need not think or repeat the word Omkar. Instead, you have to drown into its depth and various realms. As this begins, the cosmic existential sound echoes. Slowly and slowly, as the sound gets intense, your level of understanding also changes. It is erroneous to say it changes, instead it deepens. There are three levels or planes from which each living organism operates or can operate. First is the labial plane. Lips are used to create the sound. The sound ohm disseminates in the atmosphere. This is the plane of sound or voice and Lab labial service is used for this. Now there is no more lip movement. Even your tongue does not move. The sound is generated within your mind. This plane is deeper than the first. This is like when you are reciting the words of your zikr, zikr zehr, when the Lips movement is used to create the sound. Now you can use the level of the mind to create the sound where there is no labial movement. This is deeper and this is known as Zikr Khafi. The sound is generated within your mind. This plane is deeper than the first. Lips are not used. Body is not used. Body, lips, tongue are all inoperative. Only your mind is in use. You are one level below the surface. In this, sound is created within your mind without any instrument of the body in use. Then the third plane comes when even mind is not used. Now you are not even creating this sound within. Simply you are listening to this sound echoing into you. The moment you reach this plane, 
when even mind is no more introspection or manan or meditation begins it is at this level when the bodily instruments are ineffective the instruments of the mind are ineffective instead and all the clutter and the noise of the mind has vanished you are beginning to listen to something that is echoing the moment you reach to this plane when mind is no more introspection or manan or meditation begins this is the place when mind is no more this is the beginning of the no mind the moment mind is no more meditation begins first the sound of omkar which is existential echoes within you at birth newborn babies seem to be happy for no reason they are happy and they go on smiling mother thinks maybe the baby is remembering something of the past life otherwise there is no apparent reason for happiness no examination success no election victory no wealth no fame the child is just lying in the cradle life's journey has not begun yet then what is the reason for happiness the psychologist say child is happy because of health they correlate child's happiness to good health however the search of the masters and sages differ physical health is not the only reason for child's happiness deep within the child there is the echo of this existential sound the child listens to this echo and is intoxicated because of it as you begin to create as the sound begins to happen within you you are getting intoxicated this is known as mystical wine as it begins to ooze within you a state of intoxication comes as journey of life continues the health may remain but this happiness will be no more the existential echo will be no more as this will be covered by the layers of the world and the noise this sound is the first happening there alone exists the source of life as this life continues words and their realm begin this is followed by your education values society civilization and culture there is a layer of dialogue in the process of speaking you are farthest from your being nanak says you have to learn the art of listening first when you are listening you are in the middle you can move to either side you can move towards speaking or you can move towards inward silence thus there are three stages or layers first is the layer of the existential sound the other end is the layer of the world and its expression and between these two layers is the layer of feeling and thinking when you are listening you are between feeling and thinking you can lean towards either of the two sides whatever you have heard you may rush to share you have entered the realm of the world or expression then that is why when the energy reaches the throat center it is a very delicate moment you can rush to express it or share it with the others tremendous desire comes in an individual to go and share you have heard something from me during one of these meditation sessions is appeal to you the most you go and start sharing 
but it has not become part of you. So this is an important junction. You can enter in either of the side. You have whatever you have heard, you may rush to share. You have entered the realm of word or expression. On the contrary, you start practicing or absorbing it into your being. You have entered into the realm of silence or being. This is very delicate. Each has to understand this and thus maintain harmony and balance within. It is said that unless your master tells you to go and share, one should not do. In the beginning, according to Sufi methodology, the first the person is initiated into the fold. Through initiation, he can understand the deeper aspects and he continues like that. Then the master sees that he has capabilities and a greater understanding. Then he allows him to have a smaller groups. A smaller groups means the master has finished the talk. One of them has been spending time with the master for a long time. He can understand the words, the nuances of the master a little better than a novice. So this particular person is given the permission to explain the messages of the master or to entertain the questions and queries of the novice. He is given a certain permission because he is capable of doing that. And when it is realized that his heart center is invoked, then he is given a permission even to sit down, to take family members first into a state of meditation. Around him, the family members can sit together in meditation. So this all depends on the sheikh or the master because he can envision the inner state of the seeker and accordingly assigns the responsibilities for him. This each one of you have to understand so that you can maintain the harmony and the balance within. Every moment Introspection or meditation begins when you start entering the depth of any word. No word is more beautiful than Omkar, the existential sound. As you enter any word and reach its depth, slowly and slowly the word, the word disappears. As I said, you take the word wife or the husband. In a few moments, the world will disappear and something else appears. As the world disappears, you enter the realm of meditation. When all words, mantras, zikras disappear, only then you can enter into the deepest core or the ultimate happens. In fact, no mantra, no zikr can take you to that inner state when silence overtakes. The moment you have tasted your inner silence, the ultimate or the unheard happens. Each zikr or the word or mantra teaches you the art of listening. How long will you remain on the surface, swimming? How long you will continue in the cycle of birth and rebirth? All this is linear or surface movement. When will that auspicious moment come when you enter the inner depth of your being? Meditation will happen that very moment. Let me take you to the words of Nanak. Manne ki gati kahi na jai, nothing can be said about the mind. 
जे को कहे पीछे पछता है देर इज नो पेपर नो पेन नो वन टू राइट यट स्टिल दिकर्ड्स ऑफ द माइंड आर ट्रिमेंडस ऐसा नाम निरंजन हुई इंस्टेड देर इज नथिंग कैन बी सेड अबाउट द माइंड द इंट्रोस्पेक्शन और मेडिटेशन इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस देर इज नो मूवमेंट दिस इज नॉट a movement from here no journey begins instead the journey comes to an end it appears as if there is a movement try to understand this have you observed what happens when you are traveling in a fast moving train you will find everything moving with this speed and in reality it is you who is moving and the rest is a stationary and your movement is because the train is in a movement so to when your meditation begins this happens and when you attain to total cessation of the mind then for you everything comes to a cessation as well the mountains the rivers the plants nothing is moving none of these things are moving so to that which is hidden within you never moves that which is your very being has never traveled and never went on any pilgrimage never went for a holy bath does it need all these is this separate from the holy then who goes on pilgrimage who does all rituals and who is really interested in all these holy things and for what i leave you to introspect on your own and i will proceed with more explanations it is the mind that runs and the pace at which mind runs makes even all that is stationary looking like running it is the mind when in the process of inward journey the pace of the mind begins to slow down all that once seems moving is start slowing down as well and when mind ceases totally the rest also ceases you can define pace of movement but how can you define that which is not moving this is the reason that there is there are travel logs but what about the one who is at home and has never moved you can write the life story of the one who is disturbed yes indeed you can write you can write your own life story but how can you write anything about one who is tranquil or peaceful this is the experience of all the novelists and the story writers that only about a bad person something can be written when there is a disturbance much can be written and spoken about thought however nothing can be written about this state which is thoughtlessness even if you decide to say something you will have to repent afterwards nanak says this is the reason why is are always hesitant to say anything as soon as he speaks something he realizes that all that was to be spoken could not be said this is the state of the masters they feel they speak because it is necessary and when they have said they have realized that nothing could be said because what they want to communicate is magnanimous and words are limited words cannot contain the magnanimity no words can explain the light its 
intensity into the words. Lao Tse says that nothing can be said about truth. And even if you see something is said, it will become false. The moment you utter the word water, and the water that is existential, the word water is false. The more you know, you will find saying anything about truth will be difficult. Even to say a single word will be difficult. Each word becomes incapable. The experience is magnanimous. This cannot enter the words. And when you speak, certainly will, you will have to repent. Repentance is that whatever reaches the listener is not that what you wanted to communicate. That is why Tawajjo is also important. It broadens, it expands your capacity to understand. Although I am speaking the words, along with that, the energy field begins to come to you. You begin to understand the deeper meaning on your own. The, and when you speak, certainly you will have to repent. The repentance is that whatever reaches the listener is not what you wanted to communicate. The meaning changes when it reaches the other. The process of communication. In the process of communication, the originality of the message is lost. This is the reason there are so many sects and systems. Bible is one, Holy Quran is one, the message is one, Bhagavad Gita is one, but there are so many interpretations. And in that, the originality of the message is lost. Man is very cunning. When Nanak says something, you give it your meaning to it. You do not want to adjust yourself according to Nanak. Instead, you change the words according to your understanding. And this is the trick of the mind. There are two ways for this. Now you look at it. What is the meaning of conversion? Does converting from one religion to another is the meaning of the word conversion. What is the meaning of kafir? You try to understand in your own limited understanding. The deeper meaning is one whose heart is not invoked for the love of God or love of Allah is kafir. But that does not mean a Hindu or a Christian's Heart is not invoked with the love for divine. But your understanding is, if it is not open for Allah, that person is kafir and killing him is a sacred act. I have heard of a rich woman. She was very artistic in her taste. However, she was whimsical and very stubborn about her choices. She had a beautiful but very expensive ashtray. One day the ashtray fell and broke. The ashtray is not an ordinary ashtray. Instead, it was unique. And that ashtray was very important to her. The matter complicated as she was whimsical. This ashtray was the axle around which her entire deco revolved. The color of the walls, drapery and flooring was matching with the color and the design of the ashtray. This ashtray was the soul of her house. She called many artists and ask them to make the ashtray exactly like the entire city. None could do this. Any slight difference was enough to displease the woman. 
Then a young painter came and he agreed to do exactly as the woman wanted. After seeing everything, it was agreed that he would undertake the job. He put one condition. The condition was until the job is finished to his satisfaction, no one will be allowed to enter the room. And when he is convinced that he has done the job properly, then he will open the door and let the people come and visit. The condition was until the job is finished, she will remain inside, he will not come out and no one will be allowed to enter the room. This the woman agreed as she wanted the deco. One month he remained inside the room. When the woman came inside, she was very pleased. Everything was according to her taste. Something no other artist could do, but this man did. Someone wanted to know how this could be possible. So the other older and senior most artist inquired from him, how did you do that? The artist replied, first I finished the ashtray because it was easier. First I finished the ashtray and then I painted the entire deco. Whereas the others were trying to adjust the ashtray which was the soul according to the outer or the circumference. The soul was, the ashtray was the soul. So they were trying to adjust the soul according to the outer, the circumference. What did he do? He first prepared the soul, the ashtray, and everything else he painted according to that. So he said, I first, I finished the ashtray and then I painted the entire deco. Whereas the others were trying to adjust the ashtray, which was the soul according to the outer or the circumference, and I adjusted everything according to the soul of the house. Fulfillment comes in life only when one moves around the center, not otherwise. This is bliss. When you try to adjust your outer, your circumference, according to your own innerness. So when Nanak is speaking, you can change according to him as your center. This is one option. The other, once you start Changing accordingly, life will attain a new meaning. Otherwise, you will remain restless. What you are trying to do, according to your outer, your circumference, you want to bring about the change within. You do not understand your innerness as yet. The moment you understand your innerness, that there is silence. And according to that silence, you begin to adjust everything. Around Nanak, you will remain restless. This restlessness is different. It is as if you are near fire. Fire will definitely burn you. Therefore, the option is that you get consumed the way Nanak got consumed. The way... Nanak has drowned in the ocean of the infinite. So you too drowned in the infiniteness of the ocean. First you drown in the infiniteness of the ocean. What does artist did? He drowned in the infiniteness of the soul, the ashtray. Allow the drop to dissolve in the vastness of the ocean. There is another way. If you cannot change according to Nanak, then you can change the words of Nanak to suit you. This is easy. Man listens to that which he wants to listen. Man finds his own meaning in the words of the Master. We do not want to understand. We do not want to stand by truth. Instead, we want truth to follow us. Such is the difference between a real seeker and the counterfeit. 
A seeker is ready to go to any extent for truth. He is ready to put his life at stake if that be necessary. If you have to follow truth, you have to follow truth. Truth will not follow you. Remember that. The circumference has to follow the soul, the center. It is the center that determines. It is the center around which circumference are created. Not that center is created around the circumference. Center comes first, then circumference of various, various circumference, depending on the distance from the center are created. Center comes first, the soul comes first. Then you begin to adjust everything according to that. The contrary is not possible. A seeker is ready to go to any extent for truth. He is ready to put his life at stake if this be necessary. Whatever is happening on the circumference, a pain here, a pain there, that is okay. But I am living at my center. These things are temporary. With the passage of time, the body ages, the changes takes place, but that has nothing to do with my innerness. The hair must turn grey, the skin of the body must get wrinkles. These are the changes that are happening on the periphery. But deep down there is no change. What was my inner state before I got this physical plane? Is it same or is it affected by the change in the physical plane? Nanak got consumed. Nanak drowned in the ocean of the infinite. And this is the difference between the real seeker and the counterfeit. A real seeker is ready to go to any extent for truth. He is ready to put his life at stake if this be necessary. You have to follow truth. Truth will not follow you. Only falsehood can follow you. Like a shadow, falsehood follows you wherever you go. Truth is magnanimous. It cannot fit in your limitations, Nanak says. Nothing can be said about the mind and its speed. Whosoever says you have one has to repent. There is yet another reason for repentance. When you are reaching near meditation or meditation begins to happen, you will come in the middle. Two paths are open then. You can move to preach and teach others. Things have not yet settled in you. You have not moved, but you have moved on a dangerous path. You are novice. If someone comes and asks a question, you have no answer. You are looking for the answer here and there. Therefore, until your master instructs you to teach others, never move on your own. The game of ego are very subtle. You got a little and you start announcing as if you have got in abundance. With a single raindrop you start speaking of the ocean. Slowly and slowly you will become just like a priest who knows nothing. The flower has not yet blossomed, yet still he speaks of the flower and its beauty and fragrance. When you look into their lives, you will find there is no coordination between their understanding and their lives. Such is the state of the priest. He only rejoices words. However, there is no fragrance of a blossomed flower in him. Therefore, when you come in the middle, leaving the way of understanding, you come to the realm of the world. From the world, two paths are open. First is the path of the priest. Priest is the custodian of the world. So too you got, 
a slight glimpse. With this, two paths are in front of you. One is the path of the learned one. This path implies you are living the world and all that is associated with it. The problem arises at this level. You are trying to understand the word according to your meaning. You are trying to adjust and thus you are entering the, the realm of the world. The other is the path implies that you are leaving the world and all that is associated with it and thus you are entering the realm of silence. The other is the path of the priest Accordingly, you move to the realm of the worlds. You start preaching. Therefore, until your master instructs you for this, never go on your own. It is very difficult to attain to such an understanding. The path of inwardness is very delicate. If you are not careful, you may deviate very easily. Therefore, never proceed until your master instructs. Nana continues, nothing can be said about meditation. And one who says anything has to repent definitely. There is nothing to write and there is no one to say anything about meditation. As meditation deepens, the doer begins to disappear. Mind and the doer are the two sides of the same coin. Mind can say, mind can write, mind can speak. Mind is capable of speaking and that is what the inner noise is. Mind can even say all that it does not know. This may create illusion that you know. And once this thought comes to you that you know without knowing, then you never reach the core. You can wake someone who is asleep, but how can you wake someone who is pretending to be asleep? You can wake up the ignorant one, but how can, however, you can do nothing for the one who is pretending to be a knower. Nanak says when there is no paper, no writer, no writing instrument, mind vanishes. Doer is no more to say anything of meditation, one who meditates the very name which is Niranjan, uncreated and the most auspicious, really knows the very essence of it. One who knows becomes dumb. He will be so fulfilled that he cannot utter a single word. All you can do is either laugh or cry. But there is no way to say anything. You can sing, you can dance out of ecstasy. This is the reason Nana continued to sing all his life. Whenever anyone would ask him anything, Nana will begin to sing. Jabji is the echo of the songs that Nana sang after his communion with his beloved. If you can really understand the words of the Master, you will find poetry in his message. Even if he is sitting, you will find a dance movement. Always you will find a dance, an aura of intoxication surrounding him. This aura of intoxication will not put you to sleep. Instead, it will wake you from your deep slumber. This is an intoxication that will take you in a different state or intoxication of the heart center. And if you are ready to flow with him, certainly you will journey on the final voyage. Beyond this, there is no movement. The messages of the master is more like that of a poet or musician. Whatever he has realized cannot be put, in the, put into words. Maybe the song may give the glimpse of this experience. 
Remember one thing about Nanak, that whatever he said is through songs and the existential song. Whatever he said is through the existential sound. The real thing is the existential sound that is there echoing. The moment you can feel and hear this sound within you, transformation has happened. Nanak wants this sound to echo within these words. And once the echo of this sound can be heard as the words are spoken, then a new journey begins. You will reach to another level of the world. I am speaking the world. The word is spoken through the labial sound movement. But if this word creates a silence within you, you are reaching to the core of the world. If you are not holding the shore and ready to flow, then even the last thing can happen. Thus last happening is meditation of our manan. The experience is so vast that you cannot put into the words. It is like sweets of the dumb who knows the taste but cannot put into the words. And one who has known the taste can never forget it till eternity. The taste is so vast that you will drown in its vastness. Like a drop you will dissolve in its vastness.